In a small town in Texas, after a night out with friends, a young man called Thomas goes missing. Did he run away or was he murdered by someone in the community? Hey everyone, Sarah here. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about true crime, unsolved cases and more. If this is something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe. Now let's get into this week's case. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Tom Brown and how he went missing in a small town in Texas. So this case is an unsolved case and it's still ongoing, but there's lots to the story. So let me know your thoughts and comments below and what you think really happened to him. Now let's get into the case. So this story is based in a small town in, called Canadian in Texas. It was a typical small town where they used to play football every Friday. The boys wanted to be on the football team and the girls all wanted to be cheerleaders and everyone would come together on a Friday night and watch the football. The events of this case happened on a Wednesday, the 23rd of November in 2016. It was the day before Thanksgiving, as not much was happening as the schools were closed and everyone was getting ready for Thanksgiving. A young boy called Tucker just come back to town and was spending the night with his family. He had planned to spend the night with his brother Tom and just watch some films, chill out and wait for Thanksgiving the next day. However, his brother said, I've been in all day and don't really want to spend more time inside, so I'm going to go out and spend some time with my friends. So he said to his mum, Penny, I'm going to go out, drive around with my friends and I'll be back. So he left the house about 6.15 to 6.20, got in his car and drove around to pick up some of his friends. His brother said, see you later. And he said nothing was out of the ordinary. He seemed absolutely fine. So he said goodnight and they went on with their night and he went out with his friends. He picked up his friends, Christian Webb and Caleb King, and they drove out towards Canadian Bridge. They used to do a circle. So he used to go around, go past a couple of friends' house, go to the football stadium and then turn around and come back the other way into town. They would see a couple of friends along the way, listen to a bit of music, and just have a good time with each other. Come up Around 12 o'clock, his mum Penny was at home with his brother Tucker. And then she realised it was 12 o'clock and Tom still wasn't home. His clerk had always been 12 o'clock, he'd never gone past it, or at the least he would give her a call and just let her know where he was. So she started to get a bit worried and decided to text him, just say, are you coming home? You know, you should be home now, what's going on? And when she didn't hear from him, she told his brother Tucker and he decided to give him a call. But Tucker also couldn't get through to him. So she decided to text him just one more time, just to say, you know, where are you? You should be home by now. And the message said it wasn't delivered, which got her a bit worried because that meant that his phone was off and she thought he'd never turn his phone off. That's not like him. He would at least let us know where he was. So his brother Tucker decided to get in the car and just drive around, go and see some of the places he knew that he would go to, like the football stadium, or just drive around past a couple of his friend's house, just to see maybe, you know, he might have broken down. He was quite worried that maybe he'd been in an accident or something. So he thought he'd just drive around the block and just see if he could see him. While he was doing that, his mum Penny gave Christian a call just to see if she was home and see if she'd known where he was. When she rang the house, her mum answered and said that she'd been in bed. So she woke her up and she said, no, she hadn't seen him. They then called Caleb King to see if he had seen him and maybe he was out with him. He also was at home. They both said that they had done their usual drive around, listening to music, had gone to the football stadium, and then he had dropped them both off at their car around 11 o'clock. They had gone home and they assumed that he had gone home too. Tom Brown was born in September 1998 and he lived in a small town called Canadian in Texas. He lived with his mum Penny and his brother Tucker. He was 18 years old and went to Canadian high school and knew everyone in town. His friends described him as outgoing, light-hearted and had a funny personality. He was a class president and was like a lovable teddy bear. Like everyone in the town, he absolutely loved football and wanted to be a Canadian Wildcat. He played for the school team and had won two state championships. Midway through his senior year, he was replaced and this devastated him and he decided to quit the football team. And, he... and on this night, he was just going to pick up a couple of friends, go around town, listen to some music and then drop them home before coming home for Thanksgiving. So on Thanksgiving morning, they still hadn't found him. It was around 2.15 or 2.30 in the morning. His brother Tucker had driven around the town and hadn't seen any sight of his car or anything. They had called all his friends and no one had heard from him and was surprised that he wasn't at home. So his mum decides to call the police. She calls them around 2.15, 2.30, but they don't turn up to the house until an hour and a half later. She doesn't understand why they took so long. They're only a small town and it was just down the road. Deputy Pine Gregor turns up at their house he goes in the car with Tucker to drive around where he usually drives, like the route that he took, going to the stadium and going past all his friend's house, just to see if they can see anything else. 
They go around for a couple of hours. Then Deputy Gregory says to Tucker, I'm going to have to drop you home as it's the end of my shift and the next person will be on in a couple of hours and they'll come and see you and see where we can go from here. So every Thanksgiving morning, it's like a tradition in the town that the teammates would come together and do a small practice on the field in the morning. It was around 8am and Tom's teammates were playing on the field when the coach came over and said to the team, we need to be on the lookout for Tom as he didn't come home last night and no one has heard from him. Through this, a lot of people in town started to hear about him being missing. They all go out in cars, walking around and even by horseback to look across the town and see if they can find him. His friend Christian and his dad actually has a pilot's licence so they get into their plane and go and look around the town to see if they can see him. And through doing this, they find his car near the waterworks. The police are called to the scene and they find his red Dodge Durango parked up near one of the waterworks. It was in the sewage area and smelt really bad, so not a lot of people would hang around there. They knew it was his car because he had go-cats written all over it. The school kids used to write on their cars at the beginning of each term in support of the football team. Although they haven't found Tom and they've found his car, the family still try to stay positive but they find it very strange. At around 5 p.m., the police drop Tom's car home. They thought it was very weird as they thought maybe it should be impounded and been sent for testing and may have been needed later for more testing. However, the police say they're done with it and they don't need it anymore. So two days later, on the Friday, the team still went ahead with playing their football match. Although the crowd was very subdued, they all thought that this is what Tom would want. He'd want them to continue playing the match, so they did it for him. However, his mum was getting worried that she still hadn't heard much from the police and didn't know where they were in the investigation. So she decided to go down there and speak to them. When she gets there, she speaks to the new sheriff in town, which is Nathan Lewis, who'd been put in charge of looking after his case. When she speaks to him, she asks him, what's going on? Where have you got to in the case? Can you give me some more information? And he says, I think Tom committed suicide, just like your dad did. Penny's mum had been a teacher at the school. And when she was younger, her dad had committed suicide. And Nathan Lewis had been a student at her mum's school, so he knew all about her dad's suicide. And he thought that maybe it just ran in the family and Tom had gone out and killed himself. She was very angry at this, as there was no evidence of this, and he wasn't even depressed. She knew that he had left the football team, and he had been upset for a couple of months after it happened. However, he got into his second love, which was theatre. He had just started the full production and was so excited about getting involved. So she couldn't see how he was depressed about leaving the football team. She also believed that there would be a body. If he had killed himself, he would, they would have found him in his car. He would have shot himself in his car and they would have found him. So she was worried they weren't properly investigating the case. She was also worried as Nathan had had a run-in with Tom about a year and a half ago. Tom had been hanging around town with a couple of his friends just in the town centre. When Nathan pulled up, just before his shift was ending, started coming over and shouting at them all and accusing Tom of trying to break into the theatre. He'd pulled him into the back of his car and was questioning him a lot in the back of his vehicle. He eventually let Tom go and he went home and told his mum. His mum and his brother speak to him and say, did that happen? Did you try and get into the theatre? And he says, no, my friend lives above the theatre and we were just going to visit him. And he had just came past and seen them coming out. At this, his mum had gone to the sheriff's department and had put in a complaint about Nathan. So based on this, she thought that he'd maybe biased her towards her son and not doing everything he could to find out what happened to him. So she starts to speak to a couple of her friends and gets a number for a personal investigator. She gets in touch with a personal investigator called Philip Klein. He specialised in looking for children and was hard-headed and was recommended to her. So he comes down to the town, goes into the sheriff's office and says, look, I'm here to find Tom. He then goes and questions all his friends, ex-girlfriend Sage and his good friend Christian. They all say the same thing, that sometimes he could be molly Collie and get down a little bit, but he wasn't ever suicidal and they couldn't see that he would have done this. Based on the PI coming to town, the Sheriff's Department were upset about this. The Sheriff and Philip don't get on, so Philip decides to do his own investigation. A month later, and there's still no further along in the case, the two friends that had gone with him that night were also getting a lot of stick from the community as they kept saying things like, didn't you know that he was depressed? Didn't he show any signs? He was supposed to be his friends. Didn't you see anything coming that night? The sheriff then also goes on the local radio station and makes an announcement on his theory of what he believed happened that night. He believed that he'd hitchhiked and had gone out of town and had left at his own will. But his mum didn't believe this as none of his cards had been used. He would have let someone know and there was no trace of him anywhere. Then in January 2017, Two months after Tom was missing, a workman from a local power company was checking the lines and was walking around the area of Lake Marvin Road when he came across a backpack that was stood up and was just leaning on the tree. 
He went over to have a look and inside he found a load of school books, a laptop and some papers. When the police came to have a look at this, they discovered that it was Tom's backpack and all his stuff was inside. They processed the laptop, but they didn't find anything on there except for his schoolwork. And they were no further along in the case. The laptop was found by air about five to six miles away from his car. And it was on a rugged terrain where most people couldn't walk. So everyone found it weird that his car was left there and his backpack was left on the side of the road as he wouldn't have been able to walk across that terrain to leave his backpack there. This is when speculation grew crazy and there was a lot of rumours going around the town and some people started to put up signs saying there's a killer among us. There was also a lot of rumours started about the sheriff's department and it really split the town as some people believed the sheriffs and others didn't. It was also found out although there was a search of the area where they found the backpack there wasn't a line search and there wasn't a thorough investigation. So the PI took it upon himself to do his own search along the Lake Marvin Road to see if they could find any more information. So one day, 150 volunteers turn up to help him search the path alongside the road. He then gets a call from somebody at mile marker one and says, you need to get down here, we've found something. When they get down there, they find a mobile phone. However, it's very strange as it looks quite new. It looked like it just come out of the package and it didn't look like it'd been left there for over a few months. They took it in for investigation and they found out that it did belong to Tom. The cell phone was a mystery. It belonged to Tom, but there was no evidence that it could have been left out in the rain and the winter over the last few months. And some people believed that someone had dumped it on the scene on the day of the walk. Some also believed that the Sheriff's Department had dumped it there so that they could get it into evidence and it had been holding onto the phone for quite a while. This also started rumours that maybe it was an inside job. The Sheriff's Department denied this and said that they're all rumours and there was, there was no one internally involved. His mum then starts up a Facebook page called Mums for Tom and starts a petition to get the Eternal General's office to come in and take over the case as she had no faith in the Sheriff's Department and didn't believe they had Tom's best interest at heart. So Sergeant Rachel Cadden from the Eternal General office gets involved in the case and takes over. She believed that someone had had the phone and dumped it on the day of the search. However, when they take over, the case gets a little bit strange. Their first thing that they want to do is take a polygraph of Penny, his mother. Penny comes in for the polygraph and she actually shows deception in her results. She had told them that the Sheriff's Department had been asking her for the codes for Tom's phone over the last couple of months. So she believed that the Sheriff's Department had had the phone and had dumped it at the site on the day of the search. However, from her polygraph, it showed that she had been lying and the Sheriff's Department hadn't been asking her for this information. In fact, they found out that she'd actually been asking one of his friends for the code for his phone. So some believed that she had had the phone the whole time and was trying to get into the phone to see if she could find anything about Tom and his disappearance. But when she couldn't get into the phone, she decided to dump it so that it could be put in for evidence and they could get into it. They then got the Sheriff to take a polygraph and it also showed deception on his part. So there was so much confusion about who was telling the truth and who wasn't. Further into the investigation, they also found out that Penny had told the police at the beginning of the search that she believed that he may have committed suicide, although all this time she didn't believe that he would have. They also found that there were three entries on his phone for suicide hotlines, although he never made a call to any of them. So there's a lot of mystery around this case and there's a lot of theories going around of what could happen to Tom. One of the theories is that his mum had found him and he had committed suicide. She had been so upset about her father committing suicide, she couldn't handle that her son had done it as well. So she arranged for his body to be moved and hidden, as it also came up in the polygraph that she showed deception when asked if she knew where his body was. She completely denies this though and says that he never committed suicide and no way would she have buried his body and just left it out there. There was also a theory that Sheriff Lewis was involved and maybe got a bit rough with Tom and killed him and hid his body. However, there was a full investigation into this and no evidence was found and he was cleared of any connection in his death. In January 2019, Deputy Pine Gregory was on duty, but he took an hour off to walk along the entrance of Lake Marvin itself and see if he could find anything. While walking along, he discovered some bones. When taken in for testing, these bones were identified as Tom Brown's. However, based on decomposition and the state of the bones, they couldn't determine the cause of death, and it didn't help them with any information in the case. In 2019, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement found that Sheriff Nathan Lewis had been falsifying several officers' training records and he resigned from his position two days later. The Attorney General suspended the case in August 2019, as they said they could find no evidence there was foul play in his death. However, a few months ago, the case was reopened as a cold case and they're looking into the evidence. 
So as you can see, there's a lot of theories about what happened to him, but no real solid information of what occurred. Could it have been his mum who found out he committed suicide and couldn't deal with it, so hid his body? Could it have been the police involved and had been an inside job? Or was it one of his friends and it had been an accident and the gun had gone off and they hid his body? Or was it someone that came into the town and killed him and buried his body? Let me know your thoughts below and what you think happened in this case. It's a very frustrating one as it looks like it wasn't investigated properly and it doesn't look like there'll be any clear answer for the family and it doesn't look like there'll be any clear answer on what happened on that day. Thank you for watching, take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video. You call me a saint but you know I'm a stranger, a willing and able.